Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and um, in this video I'm going to have a look at the idea of what editing software you choose to use. Now, I've got an example and I have a quick look at ACDC for the Mac. It's a new version, version 10. Um, I'll put a link to it. There's a free trial for it. I emphasize it's not a, an affiliate link or anything like that. It's purely because I happened to try out the software, decided that for me, I didn't like it, but thought, well, actually I can see it might be of use to people. But it raises bigger questions about how you approach editing and looking at your photos. Um, I'll include a few bits about editing, some of the features that uh, I noticed that are of no relevance whatsoever to me, but might not be for you. Um, I'm not going to do a full review of the software because to do detailed software review takes a lot of effort. And if it's software that I'm unlikely to use, that's an awful lot of work, but doesn't stop me wanting to sort of pass on things like this that potentially might be of interest to you. Now, I'd say the Mac version of this uh, the PC version has been around for years. The PC version does more. And in fact, that's one of the reasons I've long had a policy that because I use just Macs, that I only tend to review software where there is parity between the Mac and the PC versions. That's not always so, but um, yeah, in general, um, I don't like the idea of seeing features that I can't use just because I happen to use a particular style of hardware, software, whatever. But the key bit is, what does this one do? Well, um, I've just opened it up here on a folder of photos. These are GFX 100S photos, and they're 100 uh, megapixels a piece. It's loaded them up. This is running on a Mac Studio. Um, they open up very nicely. I could go through, there's a browse mode here. Um, if I pick a picture, I can have a look at it. It's gone to, it's gone to sleep. But I can check these things. This is all of the basics of processing images, but if you're looking at a, you know, some software, um, now I've used Photoshop for over 30 years. Uh, my workflow is Photoshop and Bridge. That suits my business, that suits what I do. However, I know that a lot of people like the cataloging features and other stuff. People like Lightroom. I've never liked Lightroom for a whole host of reasons um, that, that run right the way through it even though fundamentally what's going on underneath is very similar to what Photoshop does. You know, there's, there's similarities in the code between them. But here's an image, uh, it's out when I was testing the 30 millimeter tilt shift lens for the uh, GFX. I've, I've opened it up there, I've looked, I can see that it needs some adjustment. I can go to a develop mode and I've got adjustments here, I've got slides. There's loads of things I can do all fairly straightforward. Um, there doesn't appear to be any complex addressing of the, there are no, certainly no layers or anything like that, the sort of stuff I use in Photoshop on this, but it's all fairly straightforward. It took me a few minutes to get the hang of what's what. Um, I could go through, I could make the image adjustments, I could save them. Now, one of the things I would uh, point out that there's a lot of modern software, Lightroom being one of them, as, as is this, that emphasizes non-destructive edits. Now, non-destructive editing sounds great. You keep your raw files, that you're, you're editing your, your source files, you keep them, you generate a set of adjustments and it produces an output and it never changes what's, you know, that set of adjustments, you can go back, you can change them, you can do different things. I've never quite liked, I, I've seen it as rather dogmatic, the sort of, oh, this is automatically good, it's a, it's a good thing, yeah, so therefore you should do it. No, um, the raw file you're keeping anyway, so it's really just that set of edits and the idea of that you don't need to, to keep intermediate versions and various things like that. Well, it depends on your workflow, what kind of stuff you do. Remember that those edits, so the uh, edits are stored here if I want them to be stored. Uh, the edits are stored in a proprietary format. Now you could say that um, I can go back to you know, my Photoshop edits 20 years ago, files, 11 megapixel Canon 1DS files, still some great images, um, some that I still make use of. And I say that, well, all those edits that you saved there as 
external files, not a database. All those edits, you need Photoshop to be able to reproduce those edits. Well, yes, but I've got a permanent version of Photoshop. I've got, still got CS6, and I've probably got machines that's going to be readable for a while. And I keep intermediate versions for big prints. So for some of these images around the back here, now where I've got prints, I will have a Photoshop PSD file that I've kept as a print. The idea is that, you know, that you're non-destructive. Well, it's think of it also as a benefit for the software company. It locks you into using their software. If you use light, Lightroom uh, catalog and systems like that, you're stuck with that. Um, now, there are arguments both ways. That's just my personal dislike. Now, I never recommend software like this for editing. All I'll say is I use this or I don't use something else for my personal choices. And the emphasis is always on what works for me. For example, um, I, I had a bit of a play around with this um, on ACDC for the, you know, for the Mac version. It has a new people mode, and this uses AI systems, uh, to track down and work out appearances of people in your collection of, of images. Well, that's great. It allows you to find all the pictures you've taken of Aunt Betty that uh, you've got stored away. And things. Yeah, that's great. I don't take photographs of people. I've got no interest in photographs of people. It's not what I do. Um, I when I became a professional photographer, I absolutely didn't want to do uh, wedding photography or portrait photography or anything like that. Not because I don't respect people who can do it well, but just because it has no interest. I don't collect family photos. I've got no interest in stuff like this. That's just me. You may be different. This is rather smart. I set it to go on a, a collection of photos and it found people. And I thought, oh, well, that's nice. Um, and that's it. That's the limit of my interest in it. So you've got stuff like that, features like that, which are of useful. Yeah. Now, it's also got a media mode that allows you to look through, browse through media, all kinds of things like that. It has, um, you know, the dreaded word AI comes into it and it's doing various sorts of smarter, better sorting and cataloging. You can do some and this belies the roots of the software. You can do some quite interesting uh, image metadata searches and editing. You can do batch editing. There are masses of things you can do with this. Um, but it's still of no great use to me because I don't need those functions. Or if I do need some of those functions, I've already got adequate solutions for it. So, you know, it's... It's very nice software, it works well. I got no complaints about it. I've also used for many years DxO Optics Pro and Photolab as it is now. Now I don't use that as an everyday bit of software because I don't like the surrounding interface, the way it gets pictures in and things. I use it as a specialist raw pro image processor. Then I take those images out into Photoshop. Now. There's no reason if you're going to be using software like this and you think, well, yeah, the print coverage is rather rudimentary in it. Well, you just export your pictures from this and pop them into something like Epson Print Layout or the Canon equivalent software. And you can do your prints that way if you're interested in printing. But this is very much, a you know, it's more consumer amateur photographer oriented. Um, I can see some useful bits of it, but there's nothing that, you know, sort of jumps out at me. Now, as I said, uh, I'm, I'm happy to sort of suggest you have a look at it. There was nothing about it that went, God, this is awful. Whatever. You know, why would I, anyone ever touch this? I have looked at software like that and um, I've contacted the people who asked me to look at it and said, are you serious about this? Not recently, not in the last week, not since I've started doing the videos anyway, but there you go, there's the Mac version of that. I will come back to this whole issue of photos, uh, how you deal with them, how you handle your photos. And I look at uh, you know, the Mac version of this. Uh, yeah, Media Mode, great. Facial recognition. These, this is just a list of that. Uh, it 
has non-destructive photo editing as a plus. Now, to me, that's not a plus at all. That's just a marketing term and it's just fashionable. It's much like people do for when they're printing, um, apply soft proofing to every single image before they print it as if it's some magic tool that absolves you of the need to actually understand what you're doing. It doesn't. Um, it's an effective tool sometimes, but once you use it every time, it becomes a way of saving you having to think about getting decent results. But anyway, have a look at this. I put all the links onto you know, for this. Uh, there's a free trial of this one here. Um, I, I thank you know, for being sent a demo of it. I do like looking at these things, even if I decide, no, it's not for me. Uh, anyway, hope that's of interest. If you've got any questions on these areas of things, please do let me know because it's people asking questions specifically about this sort of stuff that gives me ideas for more general videos. Now, I've because I've got the printers that I've got here at the moment for testing, um, a lot of the stuff I've been producing is very much technically print oriented. Um, I'd like to do wider stuff about photography, uh, about your images, how you handle them, why you handle them in the way you do. Please do ask questions because it's people's questions that really do give me inspiration for a lot of videos. But um, anyway, there you go. My review, but not a review. So. Thanks very much. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel. I always forget that one. Uh, thanks for watching.